If you're interested in picking up one of these great low-cost Wi-Fi camera modules, we'll guide you through the most common ESP32-based development boards on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The ESP32 microcontroller is the big brother to the ESP8266, which we've covered extensively on the show. Now, this microcontroller is more powerful and also comes with Bluetooth and an additional core for processing, and this means it's capable of a lot more interesting things that the ESP8266 just frankly can't do. Now, these camera modules are super cheap. They range all the way from the upwards of $25 all the way down to about $5, and Counterintuitively, the $5 one is also capable of doing facial recognition, which is incredibly cool on such a low-cost development board. Now today, we're going to break down the most common modules you'll find for sale, explain the benefits you get for spending a little bit of extra money, and show you exactly what you can and can't do with each one, because each one has their own individual connector, and some of them require an additional purchase in order to effectively program them. Now, in order to follow along, you don't really need anything, but if you're interested in buying one of these boards, you can check out the Nullbyte link in the description to follow along. The ESP32 cam is the classic module people think of when they think of the ESP32 camera module. Now, this camera is pretty affordable, but it does come with a downside that in order to connect to it, you need to pick up an FTDI programmer like this one. And while that's a little bit annoying, you can see that the cost on Amazon is about $12.99 for the whole set. And if you want to go even cheaper, you can find this camera on AliExpress for about $5. Now, this is also really cool because this board, while it doesn't come with a USB interface, making it a little bit more annoying to work with than some of our other boards we're going to overview, has a lot of advanced functionality because of the presence of the PS RAM. Now, the PS RAM is something that gives it the ability to buffer and stream video in higher quality, as well as try out facial recognition. This board is a great choice to combine with a low-cost LiPo shield, which gives you the ability to power this entire camera over a battery or through a micro USB interface. And that's really cool if you want to simply just throw one of these together and have it in a hidden place with no wires, because it's simple to set up, supported on Arduino IDE, and very easy to use. This ESP32 camera module that has a USB Type-C interface is popping up on Amazon and on AliExpress, and it's based on a design by M5 Stack, which is a really reputable vendor with a lot of really interesting and unique designs, and this is their lowest cost model, which is kind of as I'm suspicious spread to a lot of people that are just making it for very cheap. Now you can find this for a really low price, $12.99 on Amazon, and if you look for it on AliExpress, you can find it for about $8. So while this looks really slick, and if you're comparing it to the previous board, you might want to run out and grab one, there's a couple of things you should be aware of. In spite of this board being a little bit more basic, it's still extremely easy to set up, and you can add it to your home assistant if you want to go ahead and use this as a quick to set up security camera. There are a lot of things missing from this board that are available on the flagship model that we will cover in a bit. And in general, it doesn't have the PS RAM that the ESP32 cam does have. So although it's much more convenient to just connect this to USB Type-C and start programming it, it isn't capable of running facial recognition and it isn't capable of actually doing high resolution video. So if you're needing to use the whole resolution that it's capable of getting, you might be disappointed to learn that there's a bottleneck with the RAM and it makes it so that streaming video on this camera module, module is not as appealing as just doing so on either the ESP32 cam or the more expensive model, which we'll go over next. The ESPi is the official flagship board of Expressif that's looking to cash in on people who are interested in developing facial recognition or other sorts of neural network based microcontroller applications. And what that means is this board has a lot of things built in that these other boards just lack. It has a easy to use micro USB interface, so you can plug it in and get started immediately. It has a microphone, which is awesome for being able to recognize voice commands. You can even wake up the board and start networking by saying a command to it. 
Now, this is a little bit less programmable in Arduino IDE because the vendor really wants you to download and learn their toolkit in order to use it. So people might be a little bit disappointed to find that this one is a lot less hackable than some of our other options, but it does have better hardware than the other two. So if you're looking to get into neural networks or you need a lot of beefy processing power, this board might not be as simple to use, but it has a lot more features baked into it, and it's basically maxed out all the various things you can populate. Now, as you can see on Amazon, the price is pretty hefty compared to the other one. And if you look on AliExpress, the uh, difference isn't that stark. It's about a dollar between the two. So you can expect to pay around $34, or you can generally find it for a little less if you hunt around, but between $25 and $34 is what you can expect to find this board for listed online. Now, if you want to learn more about the ESPI, you can check out the Espresso page here that goes into all the details about the hardware, what it's capable of, and all the various things you can develop on it. But what's intriguing about it is that it has automated ways of detecting things like faces or probably things like license plates if you really wanted to develop unique applications for these sorts of boards. You can find documentation and example sketches on GitHub. So if you want to check out this more expensive board, it is much more of an investment than these other ESP32 cameras we've covered today, but it also has a lot of potential in terms of vendor support and the ability to start doing things like using neural networks for facial recognition. As you can see, while these models may look similar, they are all uniquely equipped for a project you might be working on. So make sure to pay attention and get the one with the right connector and also the right amount of PS RAM for your project. Because if you're relying on one of these to support facial recognition and you get a more expensive board with a more accessible connector but no PS RAM, you're not going to be able to get high definition video and you won't be able to try out facial recognition. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. And if you get stuck, or if you want to review any of these boards, make sure to check out the Nullbyte article in the description, because it's full of details about these boards. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.